everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Muddy Waters podcast and YouTube series. And yes, I've been away for a few weeks on vacation, but the news I have for you is the scammers and cyber criminals have not. And in fact, during my two weeks of vacation, I just kept track of six particular incidents. And look, it's very easy because if we trickle every day a little bit of news about the threats, the cybersecurity threats, the scams that are out there. It's very easy to just hear them and have them fall into the context of this happens every day. Why should I pay attention? But I want to tell you why you should pay attention. In this two week period we're going to talk about, there were over 337.9 million records stolen in just the past two weeks that were announced. And 15.3 million was scammed, stolen from victims in just two weeks and in just six incidents. These are not all the incidents that have occurred. These are only the most recent six that I looked at. So as an example, on August 15th, a Coinbase user was scammed out of $100,000 and it only took 20 minutes to take that money from them. Imagine how long it takes all of us working individuals to invest, to save, to scrap, to strategize and to reach a place where we have $100,000 in wealth and to see it gone in 20 minutes, in less than an hour, in a third of an hour. Imagine that. Um, it was announced, and this is not in my numbers, but there is new malware that can negate the protective elements of antivirus software. Imagine that for a moment. So we all think, we all have this illusion that if we have antivirus software, then we're protected and we're going to get flagged. And that was the case until recently. On 8.17 it was announced that cyber criminals have developed malware that can negate the power of antivirus to protect your system from being invaded. Um, wow. So, <sighs> this is a big one. If you are a Mac user, as I am, um, <laughs> hard to believe, but Hackers have now found a way to infiltrate Mac systems, which were previously viewed as the safest alternatives, right? Mostly because so many people own PCs. 60, 62 percent of all computers purchased are PCs. So that was a natural place for cyber criminals to focus their attentions. But now that Mac users, as an example, in 2021, um, 11 million uh, Macs were shipped. In 2022, 21.9 million Macs were shipped. So put those numbers together. Um, you're talking about 32.9 million in just those two years. That's not taking into account 2023 and what's happening in 2024. 32.9 million users are now vulnerable to hackers taking over their microphones, their video cameras, and gaining access to their systems based on these exploits. <sighs> A cryptocurrency multimillionaire lost just about $15 million. This was done by spoofing an email address and him thinking that it was a legitimate address and including that and uh, transferring funds, cryptocurrency funds, to this scammer email address. This is a social engineering attack, which we've talked about. Uh, 32 million records, um, documents, were compromise in the service bridge attack and that happened on 827 and then on 829 300,000 government 300,000 dollars were stolen from a woman over the course of three months um, based on a government scam what happened here is this is the AI voice impersonation scam the phone number spoofing scam which made it appear like it was a legitimate government agency and she lives in San Francisco, um, and she's a uh, Thai national who migrated over to the U.S. Got a call from the Thai embassy saying that someone using her passport had, sorry for the balloons, by the way, if you're watching this, I did this gesture, I guess, and somehow balloons popped up, so I apologize for that. This is not something to celebrate, um, but she got a call, and what was interesting about this scam, which cost her $300,000, 
is they invested significant time into her, empathizing with her, presenting themselves as a solution, giving her steps to take, spending time as she cried on the phone consoling her. All these things as we learned about in the pig butchering episodes earlier are all meant to build rapport, to gain trust, and to look for those vulnerabilities and then when the time's right to stick it in. Finally, and this isn't even added to my numbers yet, but an insurance software provider had over 1 million records compromised. Think about what insurance records contain. Social security numbers, email accounts, history of medical illnesses, doctor's offices. Think about the um, recent exploit that exposed 272 million records. This was from a background check company in Florida who was completely hacked. Think about what's contained in a background check, right? Every employer you've ever worked for, all the money you make, your credit scores, all the addresses you've lived at, your emergency contact information. Just think about all the things that, you know, your driving records, your arrest record, if applicable, all those things that are contained in the background check, 272 million of those records are now available on the dark web. So folks, you know, I know that this is kind of a recap of news, getting back into the groove of my weekly podcast and YouTube series. But I wanted to tell you that while I took a little bit of a vacation to spend time with my daughter who's home from college, all these things have occurred in just these six incidents. It is critical that we're all paying attention, that we're all aware. And it's important that you know there's a very, very good chance, based on this last exploit that I shared with you, that your social security number is exposed on the web. And if you have any question whatsoever, for $20 a month, services like Aura.com can surf the dark web for you and let you know if that number is exposed. You should, just based on this exploit alone, you should lock down your credit so that no new credit can be applied for without you being notified. At a minimum, that's a step that you should definitely take. But please, as you hear all this, I don't want you to be scared. I want you to be empowered. I don't want you to be locked in place not knowing what to do. Instead, I want you to tune in to me, to other scam and cybersecurity folks, resources. Do your research online. And by all means, take the steps that are recommended to you to keep you and your loved ones, your finances, and your future safe. Again, my name is Philip Macko. I appreciate you joining, and I want to say it's good to be back, and I look forward to future episodes. And if this has helped you, please like, please share. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on the next episode.